Welcome, and thank you for your interest in the Route 60 Corridor Study. The Route 60 Corridor Study was initiated by VDOT to identify areas for improvement along Route 60 from the Rock Bridge and Amherst County Line in the west to the Powhatan and Chesterfield County Line in the east. This presentation will provide information on the development of the study and will conclude with information for providing your comments on the study. This presentation will discuss the following items related to the Route 60 Corridor Study. The study scope and goals, arterial management and safety, the existing arterial conditions, an overview of the draft recommendations, and how to provide public input. Please listen to this presentation in its entirety and review the posted material on the project website. At the end of this presentation, we will discuss the public comment process. The agencies identified on this slide comprise the list of study participants for this effort. Representatives from each agency were invited to the U.S. 60 Corridor Study Stakeholder Meetings and provided guidance and input to VDOT and the study consultant during the planning process. The purpose of this study is to identify recommendations for priority intersections and segments along the corridor that ensure safety while preserving and improving the capacity of US 60 without wide scale road widenings, while also accommodating economic development. The study will identify recommendations to improve safety, preserve the capacity and efficiency, maintain the Commonwealth's mobility and thus economic competitiveness, and lower long-term infrastructure capital and maintenance costs. The scope of work for the study was to perform analysis of intersections in 14 miles of segments along the corridor for the development of detailed recommendations. The study locations were determined by historic traffic volumes, potential for safety improvement score as defined by VDOT, crash history, and stakeholder input. The study assumed a 2040 horizon year. The horizon year represents the last year of the projection period for need determinations. We reviewed the future conditions to include additional traffic from other areas, planned developments such as the proposed landfill in Cumberland, anticipated residential growth in Powhatan, and expected growth as protected by the state and other planning bodies. We also reviewed if the current road rate and the future road rate with proposed improvements will be able to support the projected demand. Arterial preservation techniques will be applied where feasible in accordance with VDOT's Arterial Preservation Program. The study will identify opportunities to improve roadway drain metrics and access management. The study will address the existing and future capacity of US-60. And finally, in response to citizen feedback, VDOT requested the completion of a roadway safety audit for the two-lane segment of US-60 between 522 and State Route 601. This included site visits, a review of volumes, crash history, operation, road conditions, and geometric features. This slide shows the Arterial Preservation Network in Virginia. The portion of the US 60 corridor in Powhatan County from the Chesterfield County line to US 522 lies in VDOT's Arterial Preservation Network. This segment is required to be analyzed in accordance with VDOT's Arterial Preservation Program. The goal of the Arterial Preservation Program is to preserve and enhance the capacity of arterials and VDOT maintained routes of the National Highway System while ensuring that the mainline through traffic is served with priority, access points and traffic controls do not degrade travel speed and safety, and that safety is improved. Preservation enhancement strategies along the Arterial Preservation Network will promote the use of innovative transportation solutions that minimize delays for through traffic and improve safety while considering local economic developmental goals. One of the main tools of arterial preservation is access management. And access management involves location spacing of intersections, design of driveways, median openings, location of traffic signals, and location of interchanges. The guiding principles of access management include limiting the number of conflict points, separating the conflict points, and looking at conflict points from a network perspective. In an ideal scenario, our arterial highways will provide a high level of mobility while our local roads provide a high level of access. In this example, we can see how simple access management techniques are effective in reducing conflict points. Conflict points are places where the likelihood of a crash occurring is greater. A full movement intersection contains 32 conflict points. That's in the top left box. By adding a directional median, that number can be reduced to 10 conflict points. That is in the top right box. If the median is closed, the conflict points are further reduced to four, that is in the bottom box. 
VDOT maintains access spacing standards that take into account speed limit, functional classification of the roadway, and the number of conflict points at the intersection. Recommendations in the US 60 corridor study comply with these recommendations. It should also be noted that Powhatan County also has their own access management guidelines that were also applied for this study. As an access management strategy, increased signal spacing benefits include improved traffic flow, reduced congestion, and improved air quality. Another effective access management strategy is increasing driveway spacing. That reduces the number of potential conflict points, it maintains the speed of the roadway, and it reduces the rate of car crashes. The other major tool for arterial preservation is the use of innovative intersections. These are designs where traffic movements are modified to improve safety, reduce delay, and increase efficiency. They have been proven to reduce delays and crashes by as much as 50%. Innovative intersections seek to reroute left turn movements. Since all traffic has to stop to permit a left turn, this helps to more efficiently serve the through traffic. They seek to reduce signal phases and reduce delay by allowing for longer green time on the through movement. They also improve safety by removing and separating conflicts. The following two slides show examples of innovative intersections within the United States and their benefits. A series of innovative intersections on US 281 in San Antonio, Texas resulted in a 34 to 40% decrease in peak hour corridor travel times. A safety analysis of restricted crossing U-turns or R-cut intersections in North Carolina found that fatal and injury angle and left turn crashes decreased by more than half following the ARCA installation. For more information and to view videos of how these intersections operate, please visit VDOT's Innovative Intersection website at the link provided on this slide. We highly encourage you to review this material before reviewing the recommendations that we're going to show later in this presentation. In order to understand US-60 and provide feasible and logical solutions, we must understand the corridor as it is today. In addition to input from the identified stakeholder agencies, we reviewed operations, safety, and public input. The travel time index is one way to identify areas where congestion may occur. As shown on this graphic, the travel time indicates a low level of congestion along the overall segment. Finally, based on this data and gathered traffic counts, we are able to identify the most traveled periods along US-60, which determines the AM and PM peak periods. We have provided a booklet on the VDOT project page that illustrates travel times and expected level of service of quarter segments between the Powhatan Chesterfield County line and the town of Amherst's eastern limit. These pages will let you know expected travel times and level of service during a peak period AM and PM and during what condition. Existing is the type of conditions you would expect today. No build scenario is the expected traffic that you would expect in 2040 with no new roadway improvements. The build scenario is the expected traffic you would expect in 2040 that reflects the mitigation impacts of the study recommendations. Most segments will not have a build scenario as congestion was not a driving factor along those segments. The next series of slides are going to be crash density maps that contain data from the VDOT crash database for the years between 2013 and 2018. This section right here is in Powhatan County, the four lane section between 522 and the Chesterfield County line. Most of the crashes are at conventional signalized intersections. This segment also has the highest density and most crashes along the whole US 60 corridor that was studied. This is a crash density map of the roadway safety audit segment between US 522 and State Route 601. We have included a video from our roadway safety review on the VDOT project page and have concluded that the majority of crash types are intersection related. Most of these intersection related crashes are a result of the Maidens Road US 522 and US 60 intersection. However, the remaining crashes can be contributed to driveways and other intersections. Other areas of concern include the residential segment near Bell Road and the Bell Road segment itself, and the Old Tavern Road intersection. Additionally, there were some roadway departures on the western portion of the segment. This is the crash density map for the remainder of the corridor. Hotspots along the segment are focused in Cumberland Courthouse area, Sprouse's Corner, the segment between Route 56 and Highway 45, 
the segment between Route 29 and Main Street in the town of Amherst, and a section just west of the town of Amherst. The section west of town of Amherst is between East Monitor Road and West Monitor Road. That section is identified as a potential safety improvement segment by VDOT. It should also be noted that the town of Amherst crash data reflects crashes that occurred prior to the recent roadway improvement that occurred within the town of Amherst. For this study, two public meetings were conducted in July of 2019. 116 participants attended the two meetings. 57 comments in total were received regarding the study. General comments received included concerns with the additional truck traffic anticipated with the Green Ridge landfill, safety and traffic concerns along the two-lane portion of the US-60 corridor and western Powhatan between US-522 and the Cumberland County line, and areas of congestion at specific intersections in eastern Powhatan. For the next portion of this presentation, we will review the recommendation process and our proposed recommendations. All the recommendations being presented today are preliminary concepts. They have not been approved in a resolution by locality, and they are not funded. It is important to note that no recommendation will move forward without local government support. Concepts shown have been vetted by stakeholders and engineers, but do not represent the final design. Based on feedback from this presentation, recommendations will be updated accordingly and reviewed by local officials and governments. The speed at which this occurs is entirely up to the respective locality. Should a locality decide to advance a recommendation for construction, they will first need to submit for funding which typically occurs through a process called SmartScale. If you are interested in learning more about this process, we encourage you to visit the VDOT SmartScale website at vasmartscale.org. The SmartScale application window opens once every two years. During the application period, localities submit projects that are then scored based on their merits. Should projects get selected, they will need to go through right-of-way acquisition, if applicable, design, and permitting. This typically takes six years, but can vary based on the complexity of the project. Depending on the project scale, construction of the proposed concepts may take up to two years to complete. In summary, advancing a recommendation to a completed project will take a minimum of 10 years to completion. However, some safety countermeasures that are presented today could be funded quicker using a different mechanism, such as safety funding, or by including them in pavement maintenance projects. Recommendations were developed based on the previously discussed information, future conditions that accounted for planned and expected growth, and input from government officials and the public. The next few slides are going to cover recently completed, previously planned, and approved recommendations, recommendations within Powhatan County, Cumberland County, and Buckingham County, and Amherst County. The previously planned and approved recommendations that have occurred along US-60 have occurred in Powhatan County, Buckingham County, and Town of Amherst. The Town of Amherst project listed below is a recently completed project. The other projects that you see on this list that have a UPC means that they are funded projects. The remaining projects on this list in Powhatan County are not funded but are planned by VDOT and Powhatan County. We highly encourage you to visit the VDOT Innovative Intersection website prior to viewing this section to help understand the concepts presented. This next section will go over Powhatan County preliminary recommendations. All of these recommendations in Powhatan County have undergone a review by Emergency Medical Services and School Transportation. Both of those services have concurred with these recommendations. This slide shows the existing conditions of the intersections we studied in Powhatan County. Uh, what you see on this are two letters, one at the top and one at the bottom. The top letter is the level of service in the AM, and the bottom letter is the level of service in the PM. Those letters explain the type of congestion you may experience at this intersection. So A is better, F is worse, green is better, red is worse. 
Uh, as you can see, most of these are in the green. However, Juice Ferry does have a significant amount of congestion uh, experience, especially in the westbound direction. Uh, Dorset Road has a lot of congestion in both directions. And then at Maidens, most of the congestion is heading eastbound, although there's definitely some noticeable backup on all approaches. In the future, it's going to get worse. This accounts for all the growth that can be expected in Powhatan County. This is all the growth that's anticipated from everywhere along the corridor. So it can be from Chesterfield County, being from Goochland. It can be from the west part of 60. Um, just any development that is going to occur has been taken into account. And this is what you would expect to see if nothing is improved. We just maintain the status quo. This slide is an overview of the recommendations that we're proposing on US 60 for all these intersections. Uh, the bottom right corner has those acronyms. So if you're going on the Innovative Intersection website, you can just reference this slide um, and then see which videos to look up to help you guide, um, guide you through this process. The first recommendation we will discuss is a restricted crossing U-turn at the intersection of US 60 with New Dorset Road and Jude's Ferry Road. This recommendation has been identified to improve operations and safety at this location. Restricted crossing U-turns can reduce injuries and fatalities by up to 54%. The most significant operational issues observed in this area occur at the Jude's Ferry Road intersection. Both the westbound and eastbound directions of US 60 experience backups at this location. These backups are more, most pronounced in the westbound direction during the PM period. With this proposed improvement, the eastbound direction of US 60 at Jude's Ferry no longer has a signal as the recommended treatment removes the conflicting movement at this location. Therefore, the eastbound direction is free flowing at Jude's Ferry Road. Due to the reduction in conflicts obtained with this recommendation, westbound US 60 would experience more green time at Jude's Ferry Road. This will permit traffic to move through the intersection faster. This configuration will also allow for quicker movements for traffic turning left onto Jude's Ferry Road and for traffic coming from Jude's Ferry Road. The arrows on the slide indicate how you would travel through this area. The pink arrows show the movements that you can currently make at this intersection and that you will continue to make the same way in the future. The blue arrows show movements through the intersection that are rerouted with this proposal. For example, at Jude's Ferry Road, you can no longer make a left turn to travel eastbound. In order to travel eastbound on US 60, you will need to first make a right turn and then make a U-turn at New Dorset Road where the blue arrow is located. This breaks the left turning movement into two safer movements that can ultimately result in time savings, as it does not require stopping all traffic on US 60 to permit the turning movements from Jude's Ferry Road. The proposed recommendation at Dorset Road is to reconfigure the intersection into a restricted crossing U-turn. It also involves Batterson Road uh, in this improvement. This is an operational improvement and a safety improvement. The operations today are very bad. It's going to get worse in the future as growth occurs. Our proposal will improve operations better than existing conditions, and that's with growth. Again, safety. Safety will be improved because now there are less conflict points at these intersections. As mentioned before, our cuts can reduce injury and fatalities up to 54%. The pink arrows are movements that you've made before and should expect to make still in the future. The blue and yellow arrows are air arrows and show you how to get around the intersection of a movement that was relocated. So for example, the northbound approach on Dorset Road, if you want to go west on 60, you would make a right where that yellow arrow is, go into the turn lane where that yellow U-turn arrow is, make a U-turn at that intersection, and go right on through. The proposed improvement at US 16 and Red Lane is a continuous green T. This is to improve operations that are happening at this intersection. There were some crashes, mainly angle crashes, with the left turn coming off of Red Lane and 60 eastbound. So a continuous green T, like mentioned before, it improves operations, and that's because the eastbound 60 movement doesn't stop. It's always green, and that can be accomplished because the left turn movement off of Red Lane goes into an acceleration lane that merges with US 60 eastbound. That also essentially reduces the risk of an angle crash because now you're merging instead of going in directly in front of the vehicle.
The proposed improvement for US 60 and Maidens Road, US 522, is a quadrant roadway. Quadrant roadways redirect left turns through a quadrant roadway that you see in the northeast corner. The main intersection still exists, although all you can do at that intersection would be to make through movements and right turns. The colored arrows show you how to make a left turn or to reach your final destination uh, through the quadrant roadway. It also, this improvement also includes a roundabout and a continuous green tee, which also have their own operational and safety benefits. Overall, this is going to improve over operations. Under the operating conditions, you can see that in the future, it's going to get worse. Upwards of 60 seconds or more of delay experience per vehicle. With this improvement, vehicles can expect to uh, experience delays up to 30 seconds, so about half of that. As from a safety perspective, the proposed concept can reduce intersection-related injury crashes up to 40%. So just to remind, this is the future conditions without any improvements, the status quo, we don't change anything. With the proposed improvements, we're going to have a lot better throughput, a lot better delay, a lot better operations, a lot better safety along the US 60 segment in Powhatan County. In response to citizen comments received through the public input process, a roadway safety audit was conducted for the portion of the study corridor between US 522 in Powhatan County and State Route 601 in Cumberland County. A roadway safety audit involves an intensive field investigation combined with a review of the crash history and traffic volumes to identify options for improving the safety along the roadway safety audit study segment. This additional analysis also included the intersection of US 522 and State Route 711. This intersection was evaluated for operations and safety issues. However, the intersection operations were found to be satisfactory with no identified safety concerns. This result of this analysis is that no improvements are recommended at this time for this location. The following slide will discuss the recommendations for the remainder of the roadway safety audit study segment. The first area identified as having safety concerns is at and around the intersection of US 60 and US 522 Maidens Road. This area is identified as number one on the slide. While the intersection itself has a history of angle crashes and rear end crashes, the crash history revealed a string of rear end crashes and roadway departures heading westbound toward the US 522 intersection. The recommendation for a quadrant roadway intersection shown previously for this location will provide a significant safety benefit to this section of the roadway safety audit study segment. At location number two on the slide is the intersection of Bell Road and US 60, and at number three on the slide, the adjacent area where a number of residential driveways were identified. An examination of the crash history in the area revealed several angle crashes, roadway departures, and rear end crashes. This can be attributed to turning movements at Bell Road and unexpected turning movements occurring at the residential driveway. At this location, the installation of a two way center turn lane is recommended that will allow traffic that is turning left to move out of the through lanes. Shoulder rumble strips and a safety edge are also recommended at this location to reduce the frequency of roadway departures. A safety edge consists of a beveled shoulder that helps vehicles recover if they do run off of the road. A safety edge is a reactive measure that makes it easier for drivers to re-enter the travel lanes if they drift off the edge of the pavement. Location number four, the intersection of US 60 and Old Tavern Road, Trenholm Road, was another area of interest that was identified in several public comments. Based on the field visit and a review of the crash history at this location, there's a fair amount of traffic turning from US 60 onto northbound Trenholm Road. There is also a notable volume of traffic from Trenholm Road turning onto eastbound US 60. This location experiences site distance issues due to the adjacent gas station and associated parking. It is recommended that options be evaluated to preserve access to the gas station while improving visibility for drivers at the intersection. A right turn lane on westbound US 60 is also recommended to move traffic turning onto Trenholm Road out of the travel lanes and provide an area for deceleration. This will reduce the risk of rear-end crashes occurring. At location number five on the slide, the area adjacent to and including the Ballsville Road intersection experiences a relatively high number of road rate departures. There are residential driveways present in this area, and a number of animal crashes occur in this area. Fully paved wider shoulders are recommended for this area to provide an area for vehicles to perform maneuvers related to entering or exiting the roadway, and to provide a refuge area that can be used to avoid crashes. In addition to these specific areas, additional measures are recommended for the entire roadway safety audit study segment. 
These include safety edges along the entire segment and shoulder rumble strips where they are not currently present. New sinusoidal rumble strips designs significantly reduce exterior noise compared to conventional rumble strips. It is important to note that the shoulder rumble strips currently exist west of the Powhatan Cumberland County line. Wider shoulders throughout the roadway safety audit study segment will help reduce the risk of crashes. Wider shoulders allow for disabled vehicles to move out of the travel lanes, provide an area to perform maintenance activities, and allow for law enforcement activities to occur safely. That concludes our Powhatan County recommendations. The next area we're going to go into is Cumberland County, and we did review a segment uh, within Cumberland County. It goes from 45 Cartersville Road all the way into the town. And this was an area with a lot of crashes along the segment. Uh, the first area that popped up uh, in our review of the crash history and just our field review was at Cartersville 45 and US 60. Our proposal is just a realignment of that intersection, just going out there. A lot of folks just kind of use each and every leg of that intersection. We want to straighten it up and make it more understandable, especially since there's a lot of recreational drivers that come out here. So again, this realigns the roadway. It does also include an offset right turn lane. And what an offset right turn lane does is it is it's offset to the side so that when folks on Cartersville Road need to make a left or right, their view is not hindered by vehicles making a right onto Cartersville Road. The rest of the segment is mainly just signage and pavement markings. Uh, this area in between Old Buckingham Road and uh, Poorhouse Road, there's a lot of sign congestion there, so we want to consolidate those signs and renew the sign markings and also provide some advance warning for those offset intersections. Over at Trents Mill Road, there was a lot of overrun crashes in that immediate vicinity. Uh, the crash history, but also the field visit showed a lot of uh, fading grass off the shoulder. So we're recommending increasing that pavement area so we can reduce the risk of overrun uh, overruns from turning vehicles. Finally, as you approach uh, in, into the actual proper area of Cumberland, there's a speed reduction. So we want to make sure people are aware of that speed reduction more so with the addition of lane reduction markings or lane rumble strips as you approach the 35 mile per hour speed limit. That concludes our Cumberland County review of recommendations. The next area we're going to rec go over is uh, Buckingham County. And the first segment is going to be the Cumberland County line to Rosney Road. This area was more lined with off-road crashes, so we want to find ways to help reduce that. And rumble strips are very effective. Uh, they can reduce off-road crashes up to 40%, and also edge line markings just to brighten those up. Uh, it gives the driver more attention to, to where the road is um, in terms of the shoulder. So our recommendation is going to be shoulder uh, rumble strips and lane markings. There's also an intersection that had a lot of crashes. We want to provide more advanced warning. That signage is not there today. Again, more uh, markings to identify the roadway. There's also some guardrail out there today that should be upgraded with uh, better end treatment, but also delineation can help identify those markings at night. The next area is Sprouse's Corner. This intersection has a lot of angle crashes. Um, it is currently traffic as uh, a traffic signal. It's not um, operationally bad, uh, but it definitely can get a little bit worse in the future. But our proposal is to use a single lane roundabout. Single lane roundabouts are very effective in essentially eliminating angle crashes, which is the issue at Sprouse's Corner, but it's also very good at maintaining traffic flow. And you can see that not just from a safety perspective, that we can essentially eliminate angle crashes and reduce injuries and fatalities, but we can also help improve the operations of this intersection. The next area in Buckingham County was from James Highway to Mount Rush, uh, Highway 24. And this area did receive a lot of public input. Uh, based on our field review, uh, there was it's a, it's a fairly narrow segment and uh, 
somewhat uncomfortable driving through it. It's important to note that there's already a turn lane improvement at James River Highway. That is a funded VDOT project to uh, add in turn lanes there. But we also are proposing some other type of delineation along this US 60 segment, give more advanced warning of some of these other intersections. But Mount Rush Highway and US 60 was the big one. That was the most uh, uh, commented intersection for this part of Buckingham. Um, it's a very confusing intersection, especially since you're coming off of 55 right into a stop sign heading eastbound. But we're proposing what's called an intersection advance warning system. And how that works is the flashing lights are on the main road and they're not flashing all the time. They're only flashing when a car approaches that stop sign on US 60. So that way folks on Mount Rush and US 60 westbound are aware a vehicle is approaching that stop sign. So the driver has time to react and know that someone is coming up. The last area of recommendations is in Amherst County. And the first part is in Route 29 and Route 60. Uh, there was a lot of comments on the section of the US 6029 interchange on US 60. Uh, for folks who are not familiar, the, four, the section west of Route 29 on US 60 used to be a four lane section. Now it is a two lane section. Our proposal is just to continue that two lane section through on US 60. So through the interchange, keep going east. Uh, this makes it more cohesive, more understandable. Uh, there are some other benefits. For example, there is now a right turn lane that's not as short uh, going on to Route 29 southbound. And then Route 29 southbound onto US 60 westbound will have a better right turn lane going onto US 60 westbound. The last area, the last recommendation area is the monitor road, so east monitor road to west monitor road on US 60. This is a potential uh, safety improvement identified by VDOT, so it has a lot of crashes along this whole segment. Most of these crashes are off-road. Uh, some are sideswipe, but they're sideswipe with the opposite direction or sideswipe um, coming off um, into a turn. So again, shoulder rumble slips are very effective in reducing off-road crashes. Uh, so our safety edges where they can be installed. And we just identified areas of high risk of off-road departures. The blue dots are just delineation of existing guardrail because that can help at night. Uh, so you can kind of guide the curve. You can, you can determine what that curve is going into it at night. This pink line is just an area where we identify there was older pavement markings that should be updated. And then just more signage to help identify um, areas as you're approaching. That concludes the preliminary recommendations. VDOT would like to hear from you regarding any comments you may have on the U.S. 60 corridor study recommendations. The public comment period is open from March 26, 2020 to April 11, 2020. Additional U.S. 60 corridor study materials are available on both the Lynchburg District Project website and the Richmond District Project website. Please provide comments by April 11th to Daryl Johnson, the VDOT project manager. Comments can be provided by mail at 1401 East Broad Street, Richmond, Virginia, 23219, or by phone at 804-371-8868 or 800-367-7623, or TDDTYY711, or by email at daryl.johnson at v.virginia.gov. Please reference Route 60 quarter study in the subject line of any email correspondence. This concludes our presentation. Thank you for your interest in the US 60 corridor study.